Welcome back to the channel, everyone. In today's episode, we are going to discuss whether or not Target stock is a buy or a pass. Since Verizon got caught up in all that lead and their cable situation, I sold my Verizon stock and I'm looking for a new dividend to put into my mom's dividend only portfolio. And today we are going to discuss Target. Over the past 10 or 15 years, I think Target has done a really good job making their brand more recognizable. And it just seems like a better overall atmosphere in Target than like Walmart or even like the big box stores like Sam and Costco. I like Target. It's a little more quality of product, I feel like. And let's get into whether or not they're an option for us to add to our dividends only portfolio. So over the last, you know, eight months or whatever, year to date, they are down 11.81%. In the past year, down 10%. And over the th last three years, even with all the COVID BS, they're still up 7.5%. Whenever I start to break down a company, I start with a broad scope and then I work my way into the finer details. So when I'm looking at Target at first, I wanna see what have they been doing lately, all right, this is a tracker of their EPS. We always like to see companies that beat earnings and continue to increase the overall earnings each quarter. Right, so it's not a great looking chart, but they beat here. They were expected to do $1.40, they did $1.89. And then they beat again. They're beating pretty significantly, right? And then Analysts are expecting them to do a dollar fifty-four in EPS. So a way to check if the dividend is safe is so each quarter. So say they do a dollar seventy-five per quarter. You times that by four, and you're looking at right around seven dollars in EPS. And they're only paying out four dollars and thirty-four cents per share in dividends. So to me, it looks like the dividend's pretty safe. You guys want to do stocks that are like no more than 50-60% in dividend payout ratio. If it gets to over 60-65%, that's when you got to be a little cautious. All right, here's their earnings over the last four quarters. 26 billion, 26 billion, 31 billion. But what I like, guys, is the earnings went from 183 to 712 so something happened here and then they went to 876 and then they're this earning says 950 so that means their bottom line is increasing so the people who are running this business are doing a great job at figuring out how to cut costs to make more money on the bottom line all right guys real quick i want to show you how i determine the safety and reliability of companies dividends first if you're on Yahoo Finance, go down the statistics. And then I always like to, real quick, I always like to check market cap to enterprise value. I always like to invest in companies where their market cap is less than their enterprise value. From value and dividend invest. All right, here's their dividend. They pay 3.34%. The payout ratio here says 70%. That's a little high for me. But they keep their profitability going up. So I think that this ratio is going to come back to that 55, 60% range where it historically is. And then we're going to go up here real fast, guys. Click on historical data. I always like to see the trajectory of the dividend. Are they increasing the dividend every year? I'm going to go down to dividend only. And we want to go to monthly for frequency. Hit apply. And all these little fun numbers are going to pop up. And they're playing out every quarter. You can see here, guys, a dollar eight every quarter. So they're doing, you know, four dollars and thirty-two cents in EPS per share that they're giving out in dividends. It looks pretty safe to me, guys. And it seems like every year you're getting a little more bang for your buck. So like the dividends almost doubled since 2018. So if you bought in 2018, you're sitting pretty. So if you're if it was a if you bought in 2018. What you're getting now, whew, 64 cents, almost a double. So you're getting, you know, 6%-ish on your dividends if you bought back in 2018. So that's a really good deal. All right, next, guys, I'm going to bring you to Simply Wall Street. I'm not affiliated with them at all whatsoever. I just like their resources. There's a 
paying tier and a free tier. The free one, if you use your email, you get like five stocks. You get to look at a month with all their breakdowns and stuff, which is pretty cool. All right, so I always look at this, the rewards first. It's trading 51% of what they think it's worth. I always like companies like that. And they also give you some risk stuff too. It's high levels of debt. They think that the dividend's not covered well. We talked about that earlier. You know, the payout ratio of 70% is a little high. So I tend to agree with them. They need to get their earnings to continue to grow to make sure that dividend's well covered. It should be covered. Target hasn't cut their dividend in like, I don't know, 40 years or something insane like that. So I don't think it's you have to, something you have to worry about right now. But if that gets up in like the 75, 80% range, they might have to cut the dividend for a little bit. So we're gonna go to that. We're gonna go through valuation. I like this revenue expense and breakdown that they're doing. There's something new they're working on. It tells you where all their money comes from and what their expenses are, right? So it starts down over here with this all the retail operations, 109 billion. That's the revenue they're taking in. Gross profit is 27 billion. Earnings 2.72 billion, and then it goes to your. It shows you your expenses. The gross profit's more like revenue, and then it minuses expenses, and that goes to your earnings of the 2.72 billion. This is where all they're spending all their money to get to these expenses. So here's the cost of sales too. So it cost them 82 billion to make 20, uh, 27 billion. This is something I always like to look at. I like to see where they're spending their money, where they can, you know, their GNA is a little high comparatively, but if they're going to cut places, that's probably the places to do it. And then I like to just scroll down and see. Like, they like it, the valuation. They give you a valuation score, and there's a red flag. You can see what's up. Price to earnings. There's compared to the industry average. So they're a little above, so that's why that came up as a red flag. Here's the P.E. ratio meter. Fair is like around 26. It's trading at 22, which is a little high. I would like to get, if you can get targeted in the 15, 16 range P.E., that's a, that's a home run. But this is the current price, $130 per share. And simply Wall Street thinks that their valuation, like what they're actually worth enterprise value-wise, if that was to match their market cap through the stock market, it would be around 260 bucks a share, which is a double up from here. So that share appreciation makes that 3% dividend that much more valuable. Another thing I like to go, guys, if you scroll down, I always like to see where the shares are. This is a good thing. Balance sheet's always good to check, too. You always obviously want to see more green than red. But that balance sheet looks pretty healthy. I want to see who owns the shares, who's buying the shares, all that good stuff. Oh, bear with me. All right. See, this is the insider trading. In August of 22, April of 23, and May of 23, some individuals sold barely any shares. Like, look at the share count. That's nothing, guys. So this is nothing to be concerned about. This was hundreds of thousands of shares, and they're like people on the board of directors, stuff like that. That's when you got to be like, oh, shit, why is this happening? I need, need to do some more homework. I always like to see an ownership breakdown too. You want to see high institutional value. That will like limit the, you know, the volatility of the stock. The general public only owns 17% of Target and institutions own 81%. So if we get a run in the general public buying up these these uh, shares, this stock could, you know, hit the ground running and easily be 175, 165 by the end of the year. And check this out. Top shareholders. I always like to see if they're increasing, they're selling. So the top 10 people who own this stock target, it looks more green than red. And the red is really small. Vanguard sold 1% of their stake. Massachusetts Financial Service Company sold a half a percent of their you know, $1.1 billion stake. So that's not a lot. People are buying. It looks like people are buying. They're adding to their position, and I can see why. So I just want to go over some of the company statements. This is where they have the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement. These, you guys, you have to look at these, man. These are super important. I'm going to do – you can go more depth in this than what I'm going to show you. 
But this is like a broad scope of the company's financial health, really. This is where, you know, you really get to see this business. And are they profitable? Are they doing the right things? All right, I'm on Charles Schwab right now. I like the little heat meter, essentially, they have with the bar chart where you go through your assets, your liabilities, your debt. You know, obviously, you want to see current assets going up and current liabilities going down. For something like total debt, we see back in 2019, they had $11 billion in debt, and now they have $16 billion, which, you know, is almost a 50% increase. So that is significant. But then you got to say to yourself, why did that happen? Probably COVID had a lot to do with that, right? So we want to see this number hopefully right here at $16 billion. It peaks. If it keeps going up quarter over quarter and year after year, then that's when we got to start to get concerned about it. All right, then we're going to go to the income statement real quick. Obviously, you want to see total revenues increasing. I like that. Operating expenses are also going up. So that's something that's a concern. It's happening to every business, but they got to get the operating expenses under control for sure. But these numbers look pretty good to me. You can go in every one and really analyze them if you want to, but you want always you want to see operating expenses kind of flat or going down and operating income going up. And then we're going to go to cash flow statement. Check that out. So cash flow from investing is in the red. Total cash from financing in the red. Net change in cash in the red. You want to see these start going towards profitability. But these big giant stores, they operate and run on debt. And anytime debt is more expensive like it is right now, their bottom line is going to get hurt. So what are my thoughts on Target after this initial breakdown? I like the dividend. 3% is pretty solid. And like I've said in a lot of my videos before, as interest rates go down, all those huge returns in savings accounts and CDs are also going to go down. The money market accounts are going to go down. So I see a lot of people you know, running the dividend stocks within the next 12 to 16 months for sure. I like Target. I think there's some share appreciation there. I think the dividend is sustainable over time, and I think they're going to increase it year after year like they have been since 2018. I like the stock. I think the dividend is not huge, but it doesn't need to be if there's going to be share appreciation 10, 15, 20% year over year. That would be awesome for Target for sure. So I'm going to make an initial buy of Target, maybe. 10, 15 shares to get me started. I like it at 130, but I like it more in the 120s. And if we can get it into like, you know, under 110, that would be incredible. I don't think it'll go down that far, but 120 seems like a great range to start buying. And if you want to scale and slow right now, like I am, I think that could be a potential, you know, winning trade in the long term for us here. All right, thank you so much for tuning into the video, guys. If you like content like this, leave me some messages in the comments, like that video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace!